two videos in a day, you are lucky people. The Vuelta a Bergos, stage three. Madrazo and Peo up the road, 7.5k to go. This is up the Pico climb. Uh, you may have seen this from last year with Miguel Angel Lopez winning. These are the statistics of the climb, average gradient 9%. I'm going to skip forward because nothing happens. Team Sky, uh, or Ineos, sorry, are driving it on the front. Uh, we have Kenny Alisson, we have Ivan Sosa, we have David de la Cruz. Uh, and yeah, those are the boys. And then you've got a couple other Randys in there, including Jonathan Navarez. Uh, and at the moment, second wheel, Sebastian Hanau. Uh, keeps going, nothing happens. 4.4k to go, it gets steep. Basically, bottom of the climb, not very steep. But as you can see, a 9% average, I mean, that's going to be mean that if the bottom's not steep, the top is very steep because there's some downhill parts as well. So this last part is really, really horrible. And you've got, you know, the usual boys around. A scatty guy decides it's time to attack. This is Samitie, very strong bloke. I mean, no doubt about it. If you're putting time into Kenny Ellison up 15, 16% gradients, you are super strong. But there's no point in attacking now. Just sit in, see what you can do. But his teammate Oscar Rodriguez does well and decides, knows the tactics. Anyway, Pierre Rolland is here. There's a lot of old school guys. Guillaume Martin, um, Gabriel, I won't be able to pronounce his name. He's from Emirates and is a monster for uh, Dimension Data. Um, so yeah, that's a surprise for them. Managed to get some points. Super steep at this point, 15, 16%. They're only going 12, 13k an hour on this particular section. Vuelta Burgos last year, uh, on this exact climb, Sosa came second on basically the sprint. He messed up the sprint, was on the left-hand side, should have been on the right-hand side as the road curved to the right. Here's Pierre Rolland, looked like he's getting dropped, but he paces it well. There's that Gabriel bloke I was talking about for uh, Dimension Data. And then there's some other guys who I don't really know their names. And Guillaume Martin, you can see, but once you could go bare. Ravazzi is about to get dropped for UAE, you can see him just ahead. But yeah, this climb, this, uh, climb is pretty steep, pretty horrible. And yeah, so Sosa did well last year. Lopez isn't here to defend his title. He won the overall last year. And generally, this race is a good predictor for the welter. Not the best. Not everyone does it. A lot of people go into the welter without doing any races. They might do Poland. But not everyone. It's not like, you know, Dauphiné everyone does or Suisse everyone does. Burgos, it just depends. So anyway, this climb goes on for a long time. I mean, you've got me ranting on for another like 14 minutes or something crazy. But Kenny Ellison does what Kenny Ellison does best for Ineos. And he gets on the front and he just drives it until he dies. Like, like he's just one of those very dependable blokes. He's not like Wout Pools who's like got in form, out of form in a tour. You know what you're going to get from Kenny. Especially on these week-long stage races. He's helped a lot of people win the Tour of Alps over the years. Because he always likes to do that. And then he comes here. Um, and I remember him making a couple years ago an Instagram joke about him making an echelon up this climb. There's Ravazzi about to get dropped. Uh, and second wheel we, on this, we have David De La Cruz, who, you know, has come top 10 or was going to come top 10 for the Welter until he crashed out on that stage going to, uh, this was in 2017 when Chris Room won and it was going to the Anglo and he crashed out um, on a slippy road. Um, but I'm not sure if he has got a top 10 in the Welter. He might have done another year. But, you know, he's one of those blokes who's going to get your top 10. Decent time trials, but never going to win at Grand Tour, let's be honest, because he just doesn't have that climbing ability or time trialing ability. He's just a solid all-rounder, similar to Watt Pools, I would say, but just not exactly the same. But yeah, Pierre Alain just spinning nice little gear at the back. They often like showing these random shots at the back of the peloton. I don't really know why, but anyway, that's what they like doing. Samitia is still up front, giving a good effort. We've got that nice pain face on him. Really beautiful climb, this, and it goes into the clouds, and we don't get to have much visibility. Looks a bit like the angler at the top. And there's Androni Cedemex, next bloke who's going to win the Vuelta or whatever, or Giro in the next couple of years. As we all know, Carapaz is here, winner of the Giro on his rim brakes. I was going to make a video about that. Every single person who's come on a podium in the Grand Tour so far has done on rim brakes. But I thought that might trigger people too much. Ineos, all on rim brakes as well. I mean, I, I just like triggering people about rim brakes. There's the Porto kit. If you don't know, W52 Porto, they're a team that are sponsored by the Porto, uh, team, like Porto football team, which is pretty cool quite common in Portuguese cycling. As, as you can see, I'm ranting about all sorts of stuff because this race is not too exciting, but I want to show you all of it because you'll get to see like, you know, who's strong, who's not strong. You're gonna see Ivan Sosa looking unbelievably good, like really good. I made a video about him last year when he won on the Paso Jao to take the, in the, the first inaugural Adriatica Ionica stage race and he destroyed everyone up there. And I said, he's gonna be a world beater. I mean, it's not really surprising. Like, you know, everyone knows he's gonna do, he's gonna do well. He didn't win. Uh, Tour de Lavenir last year, Pogacar won it, but Pogacar's, you know, turned out very well. He might be racing the Vuelta as well, unconfirmed. I got told, well, I didn't get told, everyone got told. Um, UAE said he wasn't going to do a Grand Tour this year, maybe even next year, but they might have changed their minds. But yeah, you still got the boy, Kenny Alessand, one of the cutest boys around. 
uh, 52 kilos. He's won on the angler route before. And uh, he knows how to climb well. He also does follow me on Insta as well, somehow. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but yeah, there we go into the clouds, 3.3 kilometers. And you can see it's very rampy, which suits some people. It doesn't suit other people. But I think if you're hanging on, it often can be good because, you know, you dig on the really steep parts and over the top and then on the flat parts, you sort of get a recover. And also when you go onto the steep part, because everyone decelerates, you have a bit more momentum coming in and uh, you can you can sort of relax on that first part. Uh, so we still have three sky guys. You didn't see it, but any else guys, but Navarez got dropped there. He sort of like came out, looked like he was going to do a turn and then was like, nah, you're all right. And Ellison is creating that echelon and really drilling it. And Dela Cru Cruz is there. The guy who's surprising today was Pedrero. I haven't really heard much of him. I mean, like, I know he does well and he's a Spanish climber, but he's he surprised me today with how strong he was. Um, and Carapaz was not looking, you know, he's looking in decent form, but it wasn't looking in like going to win the welter form. Uh, I don't really know who's doing the welter. No one seems to be doing it. Geraint Thomas has ruled out. I'm disappointed he could have done well. Um, I think there's speedo slightly out. I think they're going a bit faster than 20 k's an hour. But yeah, he's not doing it. Alaphilippe's not doing it. I don't know who any else are going to lob on. Maybe De La Cruz. Maybe Sosa. But I don't really know. It's an uh, interesting route. Got like 7k or no, it's, it's like short team times. I think it's 7k or 17k. I can't remember. And then there's a team, there's a time trial of 37k. So that's like, you know, 40 minute time trial for them, more or less. So gaps for that will be, you know, two, three seconds per kilometer. So we're looking at maybe a minute, to, uh, sorry, two minutes to two, two, two to three minutes from the top guys to the bottom guys. Um, but yeah, Roglic looks like he's turning up and Kreuzweig is also turning up as well. So Dela Cruz goes on the attack here, just testing the legs. Pedrero closes it easily, followed by Sosa. Doesn't really achieve much by Sosa closing that, I thought. Thought we should have let it go with the Movistar boys, but. He didn't, uh, but it's putting more and more people in difficulty. You see, we're only seeing that guys going. Guillaume Martin still looking strong, and same with Gabriel. Gabriel's looking absolutely monstrous. He's got a very nice technique. I've noticed a lot of the aero trains are quite skinny guys. They're not as like sort of big. A lot of the climbers who are European or South American are quite small um, in terms of height, but their legs are more like bulky. But a lot of the aero trains like him, Kudus, Tekla Heimannot. They're all very skinny legs and have a really, really nice cadence and very nice pedaling style. Um, similar to Dombrowski, he's another guy who's like got seriously skinny, looks more like a runner um, than anything else. But on the contrary, Woods is actually a bit bit heavier. But anyway, Oscar Rodriguez, I believe this is, he looks like Hugh Carthy here, to be honest. <laughs> it's Hugh Carthy, it's a Spanish Hugh Carthy. And he's um, going on the front. Again, just, you know, testing everyone. But I don't really understand these attacks. Like, yeah, if you want to win and don't want to do anything else, fair enough attack. But let's be honest, we all know Ivan Sosa is stronger than all of you. And Carapaz has won the Giro. So it doesn't really make sense to attack. What it makes far more sense to do is just sit in and just sort of like... Because everyone's on the same time in GC. It's not like they're five minutes back and they don't care. Everyone's on the same time. It's a short stage race. Sosa's going to want to win. I don't think he's won this year for Ineos. Maybe he did in the Route d'Occitane, but I'm not sure. So, you know, you might as well just think, okay, I'll, I'll go for a GC, get a good GC vision for the week, just sit in, save energy, and um, wait for the big boys. If they get attacked, just leave them, let them go. Um, the Brittany fans are literally everywhere. I don't think there's a single race where you don't see one of those Brittany fans uh, flags there. But so is the look at me. He's on the back. I, I want to talk to him about him because I've, I haven't neglected him so far. But he's looking around. He's looking really, really calm. He's just checking the situation. You can see he's really not panicking at all. De La Cruz goes again, followed by Carapaz, followed by Pedrero, um, Guillaume Martin again. I mean, Guillaume Martin, you're like, okay, fine, he does have to close this because no one else will. But at this point here, Sosa, watch Sosa. He's looking around, he's looking good, and he's going to absolutely launch. And there he goes. Cheerio, thanks for coming. People try and react, but we all know no one can. Carapaz is the first one to properly go for it. And it looks now like he's going to easily get on his wheel because you see how he closes down the first couple of meters easily. And then, you know, it's not super steep part. You can see they're going 25, 26 k an hour, the draft is possible. But you'll see here, he's still not on the wheel. And as it starts to ramp up, um, Sosa starts to sort of get, not gain, but just keep that distance away from him. And he's got this little bobbing style and he looks really, really comfortable on the bike. Like, not comfortable, like, he doesn't look like he is, but he seems very comfortable in that position where he's sort of over the bike, driving it. A bit like Bernal, they both have that thing where they sort of get their head over it. And just really start driving. It's quite a different technique to some of the other people who sit a bit further back and aren't as bent over on the saddle. Now, this is where Movistar are a bit odd. They've got Pedrero and Carapaz. And they don't seem to understand who they want. Like, Carapaz obviously went in as leader, won the Giro. 
but like on the road they should see like oh right who's stronger but now look Pedro has dropped Carapaz and now Carapaz is like fighting back so now they've got a two on one but are they stronger like this is the thing I don't understand is they never seem to like be able to adjust their tactics on the fly but any else whoever's stronger on the day goes for it but now like what are they doing you know Sosa can drop it Carapaz he's shown it so now Pedrero attacks and puts Carapaz in difficulty but this has achieved nothing because all you've got now is you've isolated Carapaz um sorry you've dropped Carapaz got Pedrero versus Sosa we know Sosa can drop Pedrero because straight away the only person you could follow was Carapaz so now Sosa goes and Pedrero is struggling and so now you've got two Movistar people not with each other look that like that each one is having to do the same amount of work because they're all in the draft so Sosa just riding away from everyone else and it's got a, a massive advantage now Pedrero decides oh I'm gonna wait up and get Carapaz to drive me it's like, so, so why did you attack in the first place if you don't think you can drop him you might as well wait for Sosa to attack or set a firm tempo so that you lose less time and think about the GC overall but they don't they just they just ride sometimes with no structure and like Carapaz I mean like fair play to him in a minute you'll see he'll he uh, Pedrero waits up Carapaz gets the front and drives it but Sozo, I mean, at this point here, he's got this nice bobbing style, which I'm a big fan of myself, as I as I do like to bob um, when I'm going full. And he just he just looks like a monster on the bike. Will he win a Grand Tour? Probably, yeah. Um, I have big doubts about his time trialing ability. So basically, he needs a Roman Bardet style of time of a uh, number of kilometers of time trialing. But you can see here, obviously, uh, you know, Dela Cruz is not is not going to do much. But the people who have chased early on are now starting to pop. Um, and R Rodriguez and that Androni guy are coming across. So now we have Carapaz and Pedrero. Now, like sh this, at this point, like they should be chasing, but th together because it's not super steep at this point. Like obviously, it's not cr like you know a motorway <laughs> in terms of drafting, but you know you're gonna get some draft off them. So just you know, d just got to think about the tactics. Like you know, Sosa's the strongest there. It's obvious he's the strongest there. Like, I could tell you that before, because the way he's looking around his body confidence, I think, I mean, they know that they're, they're not dumb, these pro cyclists. I mean, they, they, they're they incredibly good at figuring out who's in good form, who's in bad form. But sometimes I feel like the team managers are so stuck and say, like, no, he's the leader, he's the leader. And I think that's really bad. You've just got to communicate on the road and really have it. And you see some of the younger guys, like Sivakov and Gagan Hart do it well. Froome and Thomas have started to do it well. And, and um, Thomas and G, like, they all say to each other, you know, you've got to do it. And I think maybe it's more of an Ineos thing after the Froome, Bradley, Wiggins incident they had in 2012 tour. They've started to get better at being like, right, whoever's strongest just needs to go for it. It's all about the team, not in the individual. But Movistar, like, what are they doing now? I mean, the tour, they're disastrous as always. Chased Quintana down for no apparent reason. And now you've got Carapaz being a legend, going on the front. And he knows Pedro is stronger. But you're like, Pedro, why did you attack him? You should have said, like, right, you know, Carapaz, just set me a real firm tempo. You know, give as much as you can. And then, you know, when you're done, I'm going to get, get across to Sosa. But instead, they've had done, he's wasted so much effort, then had to sit up and basically helped Sosa attack. It's just absolute madness. But this is coming towards the end. There's the Flamme Rouge, and you can see 17 seconds. That's, you know, that's, on this climb, you know, it's not huge. Um, it could have been a lot more, um, but it, it's, it's really not. They could have reduced it a lot. They could have probably stopped Sosa's attack. But yeah, like he look, has a busy style, as the commentators would say. Um, but he is looking stronger and stronger, I'd say, as the season gone on. Some I was messaging on my friends, they're saying he hasn't really had a great, great season so far compared to Bernal's first season. But I think you can't really compare them, you know, as different riders, etc., etc. But he's definitely looking stronger and stronger now. Um, maybe it took him a bit of time to get used to World Tour level. And the Giro, I thought he was very disappointing. I expected more from him. I expected him to getting some breaks obviously you know the GC had gone for them but I expect him to be a bit better but now he's looking like he's in on his own I hope he does two grand tours this year I think that would be good for his training but then the problem is he's that if he does the Giro as well that's going to be pretty tiring for him because that's sort of like two grand tours in a row um but so maybe any of us won't but I think on on this form he should he should go to it I think he should get not necessarily leadership role but he should have a free role and you know see where he goes there's a lot of steep climbs if you've seen the world so there's some mad stages Early on, definitely potential for him to, if he any else do a good team time trial for him to put on the leader's jersey, if he can, you know, there's similar climbs to this. Um, there's a hilly stage around Calpe as well. There's a lot of good stages early on as well. I like the Vuelta route this year. Uh, obviously, the time trial has shipped two and a half minutes, but so will Chavez, so it's all good. Um, to Kreisweik or someone like that. Um, so it's really going to be a super exciting Vuelta. I'm really up for it, the Vuelta. It's going to be a good stage. Pedro is looking stronger and stronger as this climb goes on. He's starting to hold the gap 
which makes even more sense. But here comes Oscar Rodriguez. He's got off the pace early of Sosa, realized it's unattainable. And this is, I mean, I don't know what sort of style this is. I mean, it's, a, it's sort of a Kreisberg style with the arms completely out when he's out of the saddle. But you can't abuse a bloke who's managed to go past Carapaz, go past Dela Cruz. He's holding on to Pedro. He's put on a massive gap. And some people said, oh, maybe, you know, if he followed Sosa, he might have done. But I don't think it is. I think everyone else has blown up because Sosa's just destroyed them. And Rodriguez has paced it well and is coming back stronger and stronger. Very clever ride from him. If I was a World Tour guy, if I was in your side, sign him. He looks like he knows what he's doing. And he's really embarrassed these Movistar boys. Two of the Movistar boys are probably stronger than him. But tactically, tactically, just not good enough uh, on the day. And Sosa is taking the easy win uh, at this moment in time. But this is what I was talking about. It's quite a technical finish, really. Um, obviously less technical than they could see last time. But you might remember there's a, a sort of a concrete path that... Um, Lopez took and just basically took out Sosa last year and um, Sosa was like I don't want no sprint like last year don't want to lose to Lopez even though Lopez, well they don't want to lose again and uh, luckily Lopez wasn't there um, so yeah here we go can't see him but he's coming and Sosa takes the win takes the overall lead and I think he'll probably have it unless something drastic changes a couple man top finishes to go but Nothing crazy. Nice four-hour race for the boys. Um, no power data I could find, unfortunately, about this climb or these people. So that's a bit disappointing. Um, but I reckon, you know, twenty. It was a twenty-ish minute climb, so probably climbing at six six watts per kilo would be my guess for the win at this stage. And there's Oscar Rodriguez coming in eighteen seconds back. There goes Pedrero. I'll just count them all home. And then Carapaz loses some time, and I believe fourth place is now going to be David de la Cruz making Ineos in a pretty firm position. Then we've got Andrani Bloke. He'll probably get signed for the World Tour next season. And then is Carapaz. So cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.